Hello, welcome to live at Epifan, or today is also George Squared. George and George uh, today. So you're yeah. surrounded by us today. Mm -hmm. uh, but today we have an interesting topic, at least we find it interesting. Yeah. I'm really hoping that all of you guys find it interesting as well. We're going to be talking about machine learning, um, one of those buzzwords that's out there. For video. For uh, video, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's always buzzwords, things like that. You'll definitely have heard machine learning before. You know, along it's a with hot topic around our blockchain office. and AI and all those yeah, other great we're doing buzzwords. All those things. Uh, but uh, what are we specifically focusing on today? Well, we're going to talk about machine learning for video, and we have a camera to show you—a new kind of pre-production camera from Amazon called mm -hmm. the AWS Deep Lens. Deep Lens, Deep yeah, Lens, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we'll dive into that a little bit, uh, and but before we do, we're going to talk about uh, machine learning for video applications. So. Most Production, of you know, content yeah. Creators. For people who, for people like the kind of audience we talk to here is mostly content creators and people doing live events, that kind of thing. Uh, we already know about other applications for machine learning, like self-driving cars, which are basically machine learning mobiles because they have all these cameras and they have to decipher the world around them. And we're we're so we're not going to talk about that very much. And uh, augmented reality is another massive field within. Yeah, uh, machine learning as well. So, because it's a big umbrella term, right? It can it cover is. so many different things. But yeah. today we wanted to focus on on uh, on that. And of course, next week, um, both of us will be at NAB in Las Vegas. Uh, so, if you are there, stop by the booth. We actually have two of them. Yeah, Carol. we have two booths. We have yeah. a main booth and we have a booth in the Facebook Live pavilion. Yeah. So, uh, anybody who's really interested in Facebook Live, there's a separate section of the NAB show for people just focused on Facebook yeah. Live, hardware, software, yeah. we'll be there. And if you've never um, been to NAB, it's gonna blow your mind, because it's, it's a big show. Tons <laughs> of cool stuff, it's drone crazy, and this year we'll be big on machine learning, I because so. I think it's being applied to everything that we know, from our yeah. home, home kit stuff, to cars, to video production, so. Exactly, exactly. So, come visit us, definitely. Yeah. Um, we have chats open. I'm staring at lots of chats yep. right Scott now. Scott so, here already. Uh, hi, Scott. And definitely, if Remember you guys... Remember that Dan Wallace guy? He's on yeah, chat he's, too. Who's that yeah. Dan guy? <laughs> anyway, um, if you guys have any questions, this one's not so much of a question show because we may not be able to answer deeply technical questions about machine learning, but we want to hear your comments, feedback, concepts, ideas, yeah. thoughts, just throw it out throw there. Throw it in chat. Uh, we want to see, because that's really what today is about. We want to uh, want to throw those things out there mm -hmm. and, and see how this technology could be used to shape yeah. our future as content creators and people who deliver content and help creators. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. Let's tell sure. people a little bit about what is machine learning from the most basic level. So, I mean, machine learning really is about trying to get machines to do the heavy lifting, right? right? And so trying to minimize manpower to a degree, yes. but using data sets, right? Mm -hmm. So there's there's tons of data about everything these days, you know, especially if you have a Facebook account. Your data's everywhere. <laughs> um, but, you know, yeah. using that information, we can do any number of things from, if it's mixing it with cameras, like we're gonna kind of talk yeah, yeah. a lot about mm -hmm. today, that could be object recognition, mm -hmm. um, a, any number of those things. And, and why is it coming up now? Like what you're describing basically is computing in a most general sense, Absolutely. and then putting an action at the end of it. So yeah. why is now the time when machine learning is getting all this, these headlines and? Well, it's definitely not a new thing. Right? It's not. I mean, it's people basic. seem to think it's new, but it's not. It is, at some level, yeah, it's, it's computing. I think the difference is, is that today, we have machines with such high level processing power now that the speed to do this in real time right. and with larger and larger So data we're sets, ready for it now? I think with so. VR and AR, exactly. I guess it's the same kind of thing. Right. The technology's exactly. been around for 20 years, but right. now I we mean, finally have you just, the equipment to exactly. use it. Exactly. I mean, just think about the computers that you or I grew up with. You know, we have computers in our pockets now and our yeah. smartphones mm -hmm. that are thousands times more powerful than the first computer I ever used. Yeah, that's right. Which I still have. But, really? uh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, but, you know, there's no comparison there, yeah. right? And that's, that's the big difference mm -hmm. is that when you have the power to process this data, then the possibilities start to unfold. And I think that's really what, why we're seeing this emerging now. Yeah. So we were trying to think about why content creators or people who are producing video of any kind should really care about <clears throat> uh, machine learning. And the reason I came up with was that 
it would allow you to be way more efficient. Yeah. Because uh, so there's so much tedious process around creating video, and with machine learning, you can automate a lot of that that process. Yeah. And uh, why else would like a content creator care about machine learning? Yeah, well, I think it's it is all about efficiency. Yeah. Um, really, that that's the application of machine learning in general mm -hmm. to make things more efficient. When it comes specifically to video production, I think that is. Well, there's a lot of concepts you could explore, and obviously we'll we'll talk about some of them, but minimizing the amount of time, the amount of effort, the amount of manpower, right. you know, just making sure that the entire workflow is faster, smoother, mm -hmm. sure. um, maybe adding some additional pieces that you left out because it was too difficult or not, or, or just not, not time efficient, mm -hmm. right? you know, yeah. sure, in, in a perfect world, we would always have someone manually typing in closed captionings. Well, what if a machine could do that automatically for you based yeah, on voice yeah. recognition sure, sure. right and natural natural lear, uh, language and machine mm -hmm. learning right so that's that's where we start to open up the the, the possibilities yeah yeah mm -hmm. one, one of the other things i had been thinking about was that um with this kind of analysis that you get on your video you can make more critical like more nimble decisions about what kind right. of content you want to create because you're going to see the data about what, what's working and what's not working like right away so right you can create maybe more focused or better content i think so yeah i mean again the data exists right yes. anybody with a youtube channel knows that you have miles and miles of analytic data yeah. right but it takes time to pick through that stuff and be like right. okay well my my average viewer is this gender this age group in this geographic region and hey i got great hits and views on these videos, sure, you know, sure. live versus post and all yeah. these things. Mm -hmm. But again, if we can set up machine learning to parse these algorithms and go through all of that you course, you, need. Yeah. you get a, this, you know, one line final report, hey guy, you know, 25 yeah, yeah, yeah. year old males from the US at eight o'clock at night are your number one demographic when you were talking about cars. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it could help you. <laughs> that's what's going to pay your bills. So mm. let's let's go after that, yeah. right? So again, just, it, it, lighten the load. Yeah, Efficiency yeah. make make the heavy lifting done by a machine instead of by a person. Okay. So we have a grab bag of applications that we're going to pull out, grab bucket actually. Yeah. Uh, where we're going to give you some legit things that you can do with mach machine learning. But before we do that, we're going to show you this camera that we have mm -hmm. kicking around the office. This is called the AWS Deep Lens. And it is an Amazon, what do they call it? A developer? It's like a developer yeah, kit, it's, right? It's a developer kit. So yeah. it's a camera attached to a computer with some uh, ports on it so you can input a video yeah. source. It's a fairly or low a, end uh, HD camera yeah. bolted on top of a low powered Linux box, yes. essentially. Yeah. Um, but the beauty of it is that this is, as a developer platform, it's, it's sort of opening up people's possibilities. And, and it's neat how, like it seems like Amazon is coming out and saying, we know there's a huge capabilities for this yeah. market or this industry. Let's give it to the developers of the world and see what you guys yeah. can well, figure I mean, out how to, how to use it. Any of you guys who have looked at what Amazon's doing in their self-serve stores? Their yeah, I just watched that stores, uh, Linus Tech video about that, yeah. where he goes in and he does a tour. And exactly. I mean, that's kind of the idea of where Amazon's coming up with stuff like this, right? Is yeah. that those shops have not this camera, but thousands and thousands of cameras watching everything to make sure that the billing is accurate and all those so different So if you things. haven't, if you didn't hear the story, it's an Amazon shop that allows you to shop without any checkouts. You walk in with your bag, yeah. you put it in your bag, you leave the store. And it automatically bills your Amazon account yeah. and that's it. So it's all based around, there's, there's just there's sensors. There's big QR codes and not QR codes, but there's big kind of uh, yeah, but they do image Pros recognition. Like there's yeah. there's uh, all kinds of different sensors on the shelves, yes, but right. a lot of it is based around cameras in the ceiling just staring down at everyone going, okay, well, yeah, yeah. George mm -hmm. put X in his bag, and, mm -hmm. you know, that's a sale. Um, oh, he put it back on the shelf. Well, we saw him do that, so yeah. we'll deduct that mm -hmm. from the cart. So, I mean, that's one of, the, I think, the, the power of machine learning when applied to a visual algorithm in terms of image recognition. Yes. Um, and I think that's why Amazon put this out as a developer concept was to say, okay, well, what else? You know, where else can yeah. we take this? So they released this as a, I think it's, you can pre-order it now or something like that on Amazon. And uh, they, they put up a website, Lisa, if you, if you show me their, or, uh, this laptop here, uh, they, they list a few of the applications for it. Yeah. And some obvious things come to mind. You can do, you can basically program this camera 
to do any kind of analysis you want. So in this case, like they're talking about, you could program it to look for certain objects. You could tell it to examine when it's a hot dog or not a hot dog. I mean, that's the most important one. It's critical. Let's be very yeah. clear yeah. here. Hot dog, not hot dog. Uh, yeah. Gets a lot of play around here, the hot dog, not hot dog. <laughs> I'm really hoping there's some Silicon Valley fans out there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so any more object recognition and even activities. So being able to recognize what kind of activities right. people are doing. Because once you recognize that, you could then provide an action to it and do other. Right. So if we break that down a little bit, like just looking at some of those examples, mm -hmm. if how would we apply that to a video? Well, the one I watched the keynote speech for this camera and... They talked about it in a very basic level. They said you could set it up so that um, every time it sees a license plate, right. uh, a garage, the garage door opens. So basically, right. the if this, then that kind of yeah. application. And then, of course, it could be tenfold more complex. Right. Like, if it meets these ten parameters, do these ten things. Right. So it can get pretty sophisticated pretty quick. Most of the applications that they've been talking about here are, seem to yeah, be really they're, basic. They're basic, for sure. Like, they had a competition. Uh, to see who could come up with the most interesting ones. And they're all pretty banal, but you can mm -hmm. see where they can go. Like, it's like people trying to, uh, they point, this one guy points this camera at his bird feeder all day, and then it, <laughs> it, it tells it, birds. it logs what kind, it learns what kinds of birds are visiting his feeder. And that's another big part of it is that it's not just about programming something once and saying go. It's not go. just yes or no. It's yeah, it has to learn and adapt. And yeah. so that's where the cloud aspect of this thing is. So it well, for me, that kind of ties into, if you remember years ago, you know, IBM put Watson on Jeopardy, right? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of that, fairly rudimentary, I guess, in comparison today, but essentially it was just a computer that when proposed these questions was doing a search of a very large amount of data yeah. and finding what it believed was the correct answer which mm -hmm. was better than a human, yeah. it turns out. But that, again, that same sort of thing can apply here is be like, well, I'm looking for a hot dog. <laughs> that is a hot dog. And now I'm going to pull this data set about this hot dog and why I probably shouldn't be Always eating it. Always comes back to hot dogs. Hot it hot does. Dogs, it? it does. Hot dog, not hot dog yeah. is number one for me. It really is. Um, but I think there's a lot there that, uh, that are possible. And, and so you can pre-order this now. Um, I guess we'll put a link in the de in the description. Yeah, I think it's already um, or, or someone's pointed it out. Anyway, it's easy to find. Yeah, you can pre-order these. It's about two hundred fifty bucks or something yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, you have to be a developer though. You're not really going to no. Buy it I mean, it does it out of the it. box. It does nothing yeah. really. Um, but if you're if you are someone who's curious and interested in developing that mm -hmm. stuff, you know, it, it's pretty cool. I'm not yeah, sure that I love the uh, overall. I know you're beefing about it. I kind of like it. I think it's fine. Kind of find it like a little goofy. It's I don't friendly. Know. Going for a robot kind of look. It is robot-y, yeah. But it kind of reminds me of those robots from when I was a kid. Yep. And those toy ones. Yep. Terrible. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's kind of cool. So what are some of the, you mentioned the competition. What were some of the things that came? Well, there was the Me Amazing Bird Feeder one, yeah, which I told you. Yeah, that's about. a good one. <laughs> there were some other ones uh, about people, uh, you know, optical character recognition, okay. where they learn how to read stories to their children. Right. That kind of thing. I, I would definitely want to offload that to a machine. It's funny that I was saying, we were joking about that. That always seems to be the first thing people do when they get these robots is they teach them how to read stories to their children. Yeah, I'm not as sure it, what As if the story is us. the important part of the interaction for yeah, some reason. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, I do not suggest yeah. <laughs> making robots raise your children for you. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have the link up here, but they did list a bunch. Oh, yeah, they have some prizes up here. Read to me. Uh, a safe haven thing, so kind of a security aspect, so right. it can analyze people outside of a door and say yay or nay. Right, okay, you know, so send alerts home and triggers safety thing. Yes, things exactly. like that. Okay. And it communicates, of course, with your Alexa and right. any other kind of uh, home kit Automation stuff. Automation stuff, yeah, so, which is pretty cool. I yeah, mean, there's it's a, a tip of an iceberg, lot, for sure. It's a lot you could certainly yeah. expand on that, and this is, again, a basic level of it. Now, the question is, why do I need the Linux box attached to the camera? And I guess the primary idea with this is though you build the app or the, the, the back end. And you deploy it to In this. the cloud. You deploy it to the local yeah. hardware. So you have the power of Amazon's cloud computing services, which is massive. And then you can specify this certain right. bit data of data set. that you're interested in. You push it down to this. Okay. And, you use, and, it, and then it does everything locally so it's nice and fast. And you don't have to right. constantly have this link which, up to Which it makes sense. I guess one of the downsides of... of you know, machine learning in general, the way we see it a lot today, so much of it relies on the cloud and internet connection. Well, so this is kind of that solution where exactly. it's, it's, a, it's a hybrid, it's, and you can choose to balance how much you right. want to be 
cloud-based and how much you want local. Right. And, of course, the downside to cloud internet forced connections is latency, processing exactly. time, speed, connection goes down, yes, yeah, any yeah. of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, they, they obviously have shown that this very small, low-powered Intel CPU-based, mm -hmm. you know, little Linux box is, is more it's capable of doing a certain subset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond that, you might need something beefy. Yeah. So, let's move on. We're going to talk about some machine learning applications that mm -hmm. we kind of have been talking a bit around here, around the office, about how uh, things that you might actually be interested in. So, yeah. we have our green bucket. Oh, boy. All right. What did you put in here? I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, part of this came from, before you get into that, mm -hmm. came from a blog entry that our friend Jordan wrote, uh, and it's up on our blog right now. Called, yeah, like machine learning for video applications. Yeah, it was covering some interesting concepts in yeah. there. Yeah, so it that's where a lot of this came from. Abridged or highlight videos. Oh yeah, that's a neat one. Yeah. So you could have your, if your camera can understand when the good parts of are of your, right video, uh, it could then summarize those a little, quick cut video and give you the highlight reel. Right. Okay. Now yeah, it could be sense. just as basic as like someone speaking versus not. Like we right. did it. We actually did an experiment here using uh, AV Studio where we set it up to only show video where someone was speaking. speaking. Okay. And then the opposite, only show when it's silent, which is the most useless one. Interesting. But yeah. No, it's interesting because I mean, I, I, we were talking about this the other day. I used to have a dash cam in my old car that, based on a motion like a, a sector motion sensor, you could set up in the software or a G sensor you could say when it wanted to permanently save a, like a two minute buffer of a video okay, as, okay. A, as a highlight, yeah, it would yeah. flag it as, as important or yes, whatever. Right. So yeah, kind of something like that. Yeah, you exactly. Can, you can apply different, mm -hmm. different triggers to that. And it could so be like in a live event setting, it could be as soon as someone Turns on the lights. Turns on the lights. Yeah. It goes on stage. Any kind of visual. As soon cue, as someone's at the podium. It basically mar puts these markers throughout the video and then Or they walk up and they you. clap and who knows? Yeah, yeah. 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 I yeah. mean, that's the beauty of it, yeah. I think, really, is that based on a lot of this stuff, there's, there's all kinds of things. Okay. Uh, that's a big one. Big one. I get the big one. Okay. <laughs> uh, <coughs> optical character recognition, OCR. Ah, so, okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is kind of a big one, which means, you know, I could put up this uh, string of text could be handwritten it could be anything right and an intelligent bit of software could easily an analyze this and then what could it do with that so i think and this is actually i think one that's coming probably more short term in a lot of ways but that mixed with um well even just think of like google lens or whatever on your phone right, right? Yeah. you can point the camera at some text in a foreign yeah. language and it instantly translates. That's a bit of an augmented reality yeah. use of it. That one is, yeah, but you could but just do video. translation of well, every exactly. single. So that's a great example there. You held that up, but on stream, no one could read that, yeah. right? So, but you could say, oh, well, I need to zoom in and I need to yeah. translate it into X language mm -hmm. or put it as, you know, recognize could, the text and put it as a, as a, as a subtitle. You could also parse you it know. and then deliver it as a document after your right. stream. Like, here's all the stuff they talked about. Here's the entire Blackboard lecture in a PDF right. file afterwards just based on that. Well, exactly. Or yeah. trigger, you know, a highlight reel based on a particular yeah, subject right. yeah. matter. Yeah, because a lot of these kind of tie together. The presenter put up a slide that said Amazon on it. You know, yeah, like, right. <laughs> you mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's a lot there. I think that the closed captioning and translation possibilities are, are more short-term and very... Very powerful. Removal of lecturer against a blackboard. Yeah, this is a neat one. So, yeah. well, you go ahead. You do it. Well, this one, um, I've, I've definitely seen it sometimes where, now admittedly, this usually happens in lectures or uh, any sort of training video where, where they're yeah. trying to do old school whiteboard, blackboard mm -hmm. stuff with a single camera shot. And inevitably, a right-handed person who writes left to right. So this goes, is my blackboard. Yeah, and I'm standing in front of go, it. And then you can't see anything they're doing. Yeah. So you could have it set up, um, create something where automatically it makes you invisible as you're standing in front. So of it them. analyzes my shape against the blackboard and removes me from it. Right. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So all um, you get is the nice clean blackboard view, and no back of professor exactly yeah. yeah and hopefully that gives a more complete picture um so just to in, to enhance that and and make you know 
well, again, maybe their handwriting sucks and that needs to be cleaned up a little bit, right? So, yeah, again, natural language, it, yeah. all that kind of stuff, yeah. you know, move together um, can be pretty interesting, I think. Mm -hmm. right, what's the next one here? Oh, this is a pretty straightforward one. Yeah. Blurring faces. So, I mean, Google Maps already does this with Street View um, from a basic yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's lots of people who do this already. Where but they implemented the, blurring faces and license plates automatically for anything. As yeah. soon as a license plate or a face is detected, they're blurred right away. Yeah. Um, so but I can see wanting to do that for any kind of live video where you just don't want to have to enter that whole right. world of rights and model right. releases well, and stuff like that. Exactly. But if you want to go deeper, to maybe the, the stars of the show, you know, like George. George uh, and George. You know, they their faces need to be clear, but what if we had a crowd behind us or, or whatever and you need to blur their faces? Right? Yeah. So you could easily have it's, you know, they something They could learn where, which ones to blur exactly. and which ones. And also children. They could blur out all children because right. you just assume that they're going to have a more strict well, sort of, exactly. like uh, I, model releases around them. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Well, I'm picking the big one here for you. Automated video switching, visual cues, audio cues, recognizing a speaker or people. So that kind of ties... Yeah, we've seen comment. this kind of automated video switching. We saw it on the Mevo camera where uh, it, and, and there's lots of applications where it can detect who's speaking and it can do a crop around me. And then when Redbeard starts talking, yeah. <laughs> it does a crop <laughs> around, around me. Crops around you and yeah. can make kind of a dynamic program that way based on any kind of visual cues you want. No, I haven't seen it implemented in a, any really good, smooth way. It's yet. No, you're right. It's always going to suffer from not being as good as a human. Right. But I'm guessing. Well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think that's the thing. More being more predictive is kind of I think where machine learning can come in as well. Well, you know what it will really mean? It'll mean you'll be able to do switching where otherwise you wouldn't have the bandwidth for. Right. That's the application where you don't want like you have no uh you couldn't afford to have someone sit there and do manual switching, but right. maybe you could afford to apply a filter to your video right. that does some kind of basic content switching yeah. for you. So yeah. it kind of, it, a lot of the things enable uh, people who want to spend like very little time on their video yeah. to do a lot, a lot more with it. So it's not going to help Steven Spielberg. No. Uh, it's going to help the people who don't want to spend time doing video production. So we might replace Lisa with a machine is what you're saying. <laughs> Watch out, Lisa. <laughs> your days are numbered. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, this yeah, one. Go for it. Oh, there's, two, there's one, another one here. Are you gonna have that? All right. Wait for yours. Um, oh, yes. Voice to text. Right. So, again, this is one similar. We kind of talked about that already, but what if we needed this show translated into French because yes. we're yeah. in Canada mm -hmm. and sometimes bilingualism is important here? Um, neither of us speak French that I'm aware of, so no, we would want to probably have an automatic translation. Yes. Well, well live is what's more interesting because right. we see this all the time on in, the fly. In Exactly. Yeah. But on the fly, whether it's into text, which would be easy right mm -hmm. now, you know, yeah. again, take the visual, do a natural language translation, put it up as, as a subtitle. Mm -hmm. But you could probably just do voice to voice eventually as well as yeah, speech yeah. processors improve. I mean, they're already getting pretty good. Yes, they um, are. There's certainly a far cry from the late Stephen Hawking. That's for sure. Right. Yeah, it's, yeah. So that sort of thing will evolve for sure. Mm -hmm. I think. All right. Last one here. Automated production, no setup, auto start, just look at the camera, snap your fingers, and go. Yeah, this is kind of neat. So imagine you want to, have, want to have nothing to do with video production. It could be based on as soon as someone enters the room, it starts recording, it starts yeah. streaming live, that kind of thing. So well, to play with that idea, since hopefully, Scott, you're still watching, but you know, we know Scott does a lot of live streaming of his band's performances, yeah, right? right? Well, what if Scott, just as a thing, you had an encoder that had this sort of machine learning built into it so that when you go on stage and the lead singer says, welcome everyone, the live stream goes up, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So you don't have like five, 10 minutes of crowd blabbing in the background mm -hmm. and nothing happening. You know, you can, you can have an automatic trigger based on yeah. this sector, you know. And when the lights go down, it goes quiet. Yeah. And so so I think that kind of stuff is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but that's just the basic level. Right. I think the potential growth of this, you know, is Yeah, I really feel like we're, we're just scratching the surface on for very sure. sort of low hanging fruit yeah. ideas for how to make video production easier. Yeah. But combining all of these things well, is exactly. gonna be big. For sure. Yeah. So. I think so. Yeah. I think so. So um 
Definitely. If you guys have any uh, comments or anything like that, throw it in there. Um, not really much in there. Just yeah, people saying hi. Uh, Scott saying hi, and, and Mail Care saying hi, and mm -hmm. so yeah. And Dan, who's just sitting right over there, saying hi. <laughs> uh, next next week we're going to be doing the show from Las Vegas. From Las Vegas, from our booth. Yeah. Where are we going to do that in Las Vegas? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Okay. We've got lots of room. We've got lots of gears, and we've got people to talk to. And there's tons of cool stuff there. So we're also going to do some hits from Las Vegas about yes. some of the cooler stuff we find. Absolutely. So uh, we'll be very active on uh, YouTube and Facebook and everywhere. So Surprisingly, dude, no one asked about Pearl Mini. They've been uh, banging on that door Maybe for like over a month. I know. Today, no questions about it. And yeah. next week, will be more info about it. And that's probably one of the big things we're going to yeah. do a bunch of those yeah. pieces on next week. Mm -hmm. But we know uh, last year at NAB uh, was one of the most interesting fun trade shows I've been to because it was such an interesting mix. We had people come by our booth and borrow our webcaster to do their own live streams. Yeah, we're doing that again this, this year. Yeah. Actually, we've got a bunch of media companies coming exactly. by to do that, live streams from our booth, and we're going to be visiting with people. So That stuff's really cool. So if yeah. you guys are going to be at NAB, or if you just feel like taking a trip to Vegas, I mean... Yeah, we're going to be there. We'll be there. And, uh, yeah, Scott, we do want a price. Yes, we know, Scott. And uh, you'll have to stay tuned for next week yeah. uh, and see what we might be able to share with you. Um, but yeah, I think that pretty much wraps it for today. That's it. Um, you know, we'd love to hear thoughts about this kind of stuff because um, mm -hmm. it's interesting. You know, this is a tough subject. I think sometimes we sat yesterday for how like an hour, just kind of rolling around. Just because it's a random idea. Yeah, it yeah, just yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. roll around. So this. I don't expect anyone to suddenly give us a pitch on the most amazing machine learning app they've ever thought of but early days rolling around in your head yeah. and you know post in our forums and and yes. you know leave a comment we'd love to just have mind expanding chats about this stuff mm -hmm. so thanks for watching everybody see you from las vegas in a week thanks everyone